Stanton, one of the most feared hitters in the game. He's so good, he's the Majors RBI leader, even though he hasn't found his groove yet. Madison Bumgarner, he's pitching like an ace, and it will be up to the World Series MVP to handle Stanton and the rest of the Marlins tonight. Game three, next. All roads seem to lead to 24 Willie Mays Plaza, the beautiful downtown home of the Giants, as the Giants and Marlins get ready for game three of their four-game series. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller with Mike Kruko. Welcome to San Francisco Giants baseball. The Giants have done well here at home on this long homestand. They're 6-2, and two, including their victory last night. Now we've got two of the best in the game, Bumgarner and Stanton, going head-to-head -head here. Well, that is the premier matchup, no doubt about it. And we also know that, that Stanton sees him well. He's got eight hits and 13 at-bats against Bumgarner. But right now, Bumgarner is on top of his game. The last couple outings, he has really had the ability to use all of his pitches. His breaking balls have been the best we've seen him all year long. It should be interesting. From the offensive side of the, of the, of the Giants' perspective, two guys in the middle of that lineup, Buster Posey and Brandon Belt, are on fire. And one big weapon for the Marlins, D. Gordon is out for a second night with a tight hamstring, so that hurts them. It's going to be a great game. All right, Casey McGee, the former Marlin, who had a grand slam last night and hit the ball hard all four times at the plate. So we're set to go. Bumgarner, Stanton, Giants, Marlins, back with the lineups and the first pitch right after this. The best view. There's no seats left inside the ballpark. Sold out. There's the Marlins batting order brought to you by your Northern California Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Christian Yelich leads off in left field. It'll be Martin Prado at third base, a right handed hitter, and everybody else is a right handed hitter. Giancarlo Stanton in right field, Marcel Ozuna in center field. And by the way, look at those career numbers for. Giancarlo Stanton against Bumgarner. Real Muto, the catcher, 
is in the fifth spot. Jeff Baker at second. Michael Morse, the former Giant, at first. Danny Echevarria bats eighth. And uh, David Phelps is hitting ninth. And here's Bumgarner with his numbers for the season. And he'll face the only lefty in the Marlins lineup right here. Christian Yelitz. Yelitz just back from the disabled list yesterday. And we are underway. Called strike. Only 57 degrees at game time here at AT&T Park. And Mike, we have the long shadows. Could make it a little more difficult for the hitter early on. And that's strike two call. Well, always a part of the day that favors the pitcher when you have uh, any kind of shine or any sort of distraction in the batter's eye out center field. And uh, it's just a matter of letting the shade take over the backdrop before it evens out. But right now it is all pitcher advantage. You know, the thing too, John, is that the thing you don't see as a hitter is you don't see the spin of the ball. One ball, two strikes. And that is back out of play. A 93 mile an hour fastball. The umpiring alignment shows uh, Mike Malinsky behind the plate. He of the silent CH. Mike Winters, the crew chief at first. Mark Wegner at second. Marty Foster at third. Winters, the crew chief, and Malinsky back of the plate. Again, the 1 2 offering. Her ball. And this is panic. Plenty of time. One away. Let's take a look at the defense for the Giants playing behind Bumgarner. I started the Giants outfield. It'll be Aoki, Pagan, and Maxwell, the best arm in right field with Maxwell. Crawford McGee will be on the left side of the infield. Panic and Belt will be on the right side. And Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad putting down the sides. Now Martin Prado hitting 301. They got Prado and tonight's starting pitcher David Phelps in the deal with the Yankees. The deal that sent Nathan Evaldi the big right hander to New York in the offseason. And Buck Garner with a fastball for a called strike. Prado we remember him with Atlanta then he was with Arizona and last year as the D-back started going downhill he was traded to the Yankees for the stretch run. It's a good player. Really plays the game right, and you would say that he's a professional hitter. He uses the whole field, thinks well. He, very good situational here, hitter, tough to strike out. Right back to the screen, one and two. You mentioned the plate up by Mike Malinsky. He does not have a, a big zone. It's a low zone, and it, and it can be tight. It's usually tighter early in the game. It has a tendency to loosen up. Uh, and the other thing, too, is he takes a while to get used to breaking balls. You may see him miss a few early in the game, but as the game wears on, he gets better. And all in all, pretty good zone. It's a good crew. And that almost hit his back foot. Two and two. Tim Litscomb, when he pitched your last night's ball game for Bumgarner. And what you're going to see from him is low 90s fastball with a natural cut. He has a cutter he can enhance. The movement, which runs into a right hander, got a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. Just got a piece of that one. And what we noticed with Bumgar in the last couple of games is his curveball slider combination have been lethal. They really have been quick. Those are pitches that he didn't have great consistency with early in the year. But his last outing against San Diego when he gave up two hits in seven and third, and the outing before that against the Dodgers when he gave up five hits in eight innings. Struck out nine, just great breaking balls. And he's got good breaking balls tonight. Right up the middle, base hit. So, an excellent trip to the plate there for Prado and the first hit of the game. And here comes Stanton. Now, a big guy, 6'6, 225. And I mean, you talk about power. Is the guy that probably hits the ball farther than anybody else in baseball. And he sees Bumgarner well. You saw the numbers lifetime. And that home run, that was just astonishing. In that huge ballpark past the big home run sculpture. One of eight hits that he's had in 13 career at bats against Bumgarner. On one the count to him. 
We saw him hit some uh, spectacular home runs during batting practice tonight. Again. Well, he cleared the bleachers right below the glove out left center. We've never seen that before. I said 225 pounds. It's 240 pounds on that six foot six inch frame. So over here, just over this neck of the woods is where he hit the ball in batting practice. It dropped all of our jaws. We'd never seen that before. Yeah. I'm still trying to pick mine up. Three infielders play to the left of second. Ooh, a big rip at that, fouling it back to the screen. One and two. And he hasn't really gotten going yet, which is kind of scary considering he leads the majors in RBIs. You can see the the level swing. And this is what stands out about Stanton and makes him so special is he keeps a flat swing. And for a guy 6'6", six, 6'6", six, six, six hitters usually have a little uppercut, a little loop. They're better low ball hitters than high ball hitters. You can't say that about Stanton. He covers the high zone beautifully. I mean, the only other hitter I can remember with that type of coverage from the right side, his height was Dave Winfield. Well, he went after that high one. And from the left side, you may remember John Olerud, who was a tall hitter. He had a flat swing, and he could cover the high pitch. But this guy here is, is quite special. He led the National League at home runs last year, even though he missed the last three weeks or so of the season after he got beamed. He's not wearing that face guard tonight. Here's the one-two pitch. And he struck him out. A very quick breaking ball which has just been on fire for Bumgarner in these last several starts. Start this thing at the base of the strike zone and then just let it bottom out. And he's trying to bounce that ball between home plate and Buster Posey. And he gets Stanton to go out of the zone. And that really is what is holding back Stanton right now. He's not got a great strike zone. He's chasing a lot of balls, especially down below the zone. Here's Marcel Ozuna. Now Ozuna is a guy who just torments the Giants no matter who's pitching. And that's in there for a called strike with a fastball. Ozuna, however, he's only had three career at bats against Bumgarner and has not had a hit yet. Got his first home run of this season in game one of the series on Thursday. Batting with two down, Prado at first, belt on the bag with him. The wind is blowing out at game time. Although the flags at top the Willie Mays wall in right field indicate the wind out there blowing out toward left field. And uh, those flags out in right center, the big flag court also indicate that now. The way the flags are blowing out, you would think that the, the wind is carrying out the left and that right field is closed up. One and two. And a good breaking ball. The low three quarter release from Bumgarner is what gives him big angles on his breaking balls. They're not as as steep as other breaking balls, the guys who have higher releases, but they come across the plate and they're very quick. Along the right field line, racing in Maxwell, the dive and the catch. In fair ground. Mike Winters, the first base umpire, made the call. Had he not been able to hang on to it, that would have been a fair ball. Wow, what a play. And he's doing it over and over again.
Cubby Cove as we are underway here. Giants batting order is presented by Audi Truth in Engineering. It'll be Aoki left field. Panic second base. Pagan in center. Buster Posey who was on base all five times. He came to the plate last night. Two hits and three walks. Brandon Belt who's hitting 545 in his last six games and with a double in each of those games. Maxwell right field. Crawford at short. McGee fresh from his grand slam a night ago and Bumgarner hits ninth. Up against David Phelps the Marlins right hander. Got the call on that one. The thing about Phelps is he's a swing man. I mean, he's really a, an invaluable piece of a pitching staff because he could pitch out of the bullpen and he, he could start for it. And strike two call. Phelps likes to work a quick pace. You're going to see two types of fastball movement, four seam and two seam. He'll be between 88 and 92 miles per hour. He's got a curveball slider and a changeup. That spun Aoki away. One and two. Phelps last year with the Yankees. Was in 32 games, he made 17 starts. It just gives you the idea of, it, of how he's been used. And probably going to get used the same way here in Miami. Toward the middle. This is Baker. And he got him. One away. Let's take a look at that Marlins defense playing behind Phelps, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton, the best arms at center and right field. Echevarria and Prado on the left side of the infield. Baker and Morris on the right side. And uh, JT Real Muto will be in the squad putting down the signs. Joe Panic, 287 average, 345 on base percentage. No score in the game, last of the first. In for a called strike. Phelps is out of uh, Notre Dame. He was a political science and computer application or applications major. There is Yelich right to him. Two down. And now Pagan will come up. Pagan, the switch hitter, will bat left handed against this right hander. 105 game time tomorrow, the finale of the homestand and of the, this series. Vogelsong will get the call for the Giants against Matt Latos. And then the Giants will head off to Houston for two to get a look at this. Astros ball club that has sort of set the American League on fire in the first weeks of the season. And then they go to Cincinnati for four starting Thursday. And there's ball one too high to Pagan. There's a strike. One ball, one strike now. Phelps, the former American leaguer, as Mike mentioned, the only giant who had ever faced him before in a big league game was Aoki. Everybody else is seeing him for the first time. Two down, nobody on. Buster Posey is on deck. Last night, the middle of the order, through the eighth spot in the order, did all the damage for the Giants. The Top three spots in the order were more or less shut down. Pagan had an 0 for 5, and he has not had too many of those so far this year. Ron Wotus and uh, Steve Decker looking on. That's McGee in the background along with Brandon Crawford. And that sweeping breaking ball down and in. Two and one. Ball three. You see, you're going to see Phelps use that sinker a lot when he's behind the count. When he's right, he'll, he'll get a ground ball, a lot of them. But he has to establish knee high command to be effective. And so far tonight, he has done that. Foul tipped. Three and two. Pagan says that with that uh, middle finger that. Got stepped on, really got spiked, and a big laceration across the top of the finger and the side. Baker, the hurried throw, too late. Pagan, with the speed, beat that one out.
And that's the Giants first hit. Now just a 3-2 don't walk him fastball right across the belt and Pagan shortens up just tries to go back up the middle and Pagan from the left side. I mean You're really going to put the pressure on the defense because of his speed and Jeff Baker cannot come up with a play Got out of the box beautifully a whole lot of backswing 4-1 from the left side It's great speed now Buster Posey. Buster now hitting 288, 370 on base average. And it's ball one. Buster in the cleanup spot again as he was last night. Last night he was almost like the leadoff man, getting on base and setting the table. He scored three times. That's the wrong guy to hit it uh, toward because he. Fields everything. Echeverria. That's the end of the inning. We go to the second. No score. On now, save big on every Toyota. Check out all the deals at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Giants history, most career strikeouts. Christy Mathewson, number one, the Hall of Famer. Juan Marichal, number two, Hall of Famer. Amos Rusi in the hall. Carl Hubble in the hall. And then Tim Lincecum. Lincecum had eight more added to his total last night in six innings. Yeah, and seven of those strikeouts were swinging this strikeouts, which I think is always. The true testimony of great stuff kind of takes out the big strike zone equation. JT Real Muto, the catcher. And quickly, he's behind Bumgarner, 0 and 2. Because there are guys that get a high strikeout total. Well, if an umpire has an unrealistic strikeout or a strike zone and he's given big corners, you know, a lot of called strike threes. But when you're swinging and missing, that says a whole lot about a guy's stuff. And let's go, let's go ahead and going last night. A ball and two strikes now to Real Muto, the young. Marlins catcher. Hitting 222 with no home runs and 72 at bats. Curveball, did he swing? Yes. Mike Winters rings him up from over at first base on appeal. Now, talking about Tim Linscombe last night, this is our ram gutsy play. Linscombe strike out of Giancarlo Stanton on three pitches with the bases loaded. This is the end of the top of the fifth, and this is a this is such a huge strikeout in terms of the way the game went. And that's our Ram Gutsy play. Ram 1500 is Green Journal's 2015 Green Truck of the Year. Guts Glory Ram. Visit RamTrucks.com to learn more. Jeff Baker and uh, Linskim. And really, that inning, that was the chance the Marlins had. Uh, Stanton came up as the possible tying run. And Linscombe struck him out. That was an inning where he had thrown 25 pitches already. 
And then one two three and out. For the great Marlon Slugger. At the knees call the strike it's 0 and 2. Jeff Baker. Who's made a, a pretty nice career for himself out of. Being a guy who can. Hit left handers effectively. He jammed him. McGee. Out number two. That's the thing about Madison Bumgarner. I mean, it's the natural movement of his, of his fastball from that low three quarter release that he has is going to run in flat to a right hander. And if he can plant that thing at the belt, it's very difficult for a right handed hitter to square that thing up. You get after it, what you think is going to be the contact point, and all of a sudden it moves right up your bat. You get jammed just like the last pitch. Two down, nobody on. And Michael Morris. Morris, two for eight, lifetime against Bumgarner with a home run. Takes a called strike. And Morris wasn't so sure. Well, if you're getting that, that, that strike right at the belt in the inside corner, when Bumgarner's out there, and that, I'm talking about the inside corner, right headed hitters, it, it's going to be a good night for Bumgarner. Was he setting right back up there again? I always thought it was interesting as to how a team would play a player when he left that club and that team would play him the next year, like the Giants with Michael Morris, and that's straight away. They know he hits the ball all over the field, and that's respect. That's how you want to be defended if you're a hitter. That simply says that you have balance, that you have the ability to hit the ball from foul line to foul line, and that's Michael Morris. Bonus who sets the defense. Bonus sets the defense in the infield. Roberto Kelly will set it in the outfield. Three and one the count now. There they are. Bonus on the left. Kelly on the right. So Bumgarner behind in the count to. The dangerous Michael Morris, three and one. And he blew a fastball right by him. Well, there's a little greed in that hack for Michael Morris. A lot of respect these two guys have for one another. This is just man on man right here, and he blows one right through him. Full count, two down. Struck him out. Three strikeouts in two innings for Bumgarner. Brandon Bell coming up.
tonight. It is presented by PG&E. They are also presenting their solar suitcase, and I had a chance to catch up with PG&E spokesperson Nicole Liebelt and Elijah Allen, a high school student at Oakland High School, about how they're teaming up to bring efforts to people in need all over the world for electricity. PG&E is committed to solar power and renewable technology and also educating our local students and our future leaders of tomorrow. So the Solar Suitcase program is a perfect pairing. What we're doing is we're asking students to be brilliant, to act locally, think globally with our Solar Suitcase, learn about renewable te technology, and then have the opportunity to earn a chance to bring that technology overseas to, uh, to Africa. I'm really excited to be part of this program because most people don't get to do it. And being being an Oakland school, they kind of think down on us, but we're we're just like everyone else, and we want to help other other countries, like developing countries with electricity problems they may face in their life. Very cool program, gentlemen. Oakland High School, one of the first high schools to participate. John, All right, Amy, thank you. Fascinating. First ball swinging. Brandon Belt is thrown out by David Phelps. Belt may be in disbelief about what just happened because lately when he swings the bat he squares it up and hits it hard somewhere. Oh he's been red hot. You take a look at what he's done in the last six games 12 for 22 with six doubles hitting 545 that time and since April 17th when he was hitting 071 he's raised his bat and averaged 231 points. That's hot. Maxwell one ball and no strikes. Maxwell had Couple of big hits last night. Each driving in a run. He was two for three with a walk in that game. And that one had a little cut to it and ran right out beyond the end of his bat, a swinging strike. Out toward right center field. But there is Stanton. Out number two. Stanton, like a lot of right fielders here at AT&T, they'll cheat towards the gap in right center to protect against triples alley. They'll give the line. The way that we have seen right fielders play here, I think is it, it's affected the way right fielders play around baseball. We're seeing more areas on the right field side towards the line given and, and gaps taken away. And when you think about it, there's a reason for it. That's the way how hitting is taught today. Use the middle of the field. You don't see pull hitters now very often. Crawford deep into center, but Ozuna seems to have it uh, zoned on the warning track. He takes it, and that ends the inning for the Giants. Six pitches and out. On to the third. Bumgarner back to the mound. No score. Bloop. Your special event package includes a ticket to the Giants-Braves game, access to the pregame singles night party on Virgin America Club level, and one complimentary beverage. 
And remember, to attend singles night, you must purchase the special event ticket. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events and check out Bloop. Echevarria hitting 313, leads off. One ball, no strikes to count, and a foul out of play. On a Bumgarner fastball, one ball and one strike. Echevarria really has been blossoming. Two years ago when he first came up, he was a, a great glove man who was just overmatched as a hitter. He's got a 313 batting average right now. He also has four, uh, two homers, 17 batted in. Just off the outside, and it's two and one. He's got a 339 on base percentage. Pretty nice having 17 RBIs down there in the eighth spot of your lineup. The foul tip on a fastball, two and two. One thing about Echeverria, though, I mean, he's had 112 at bats so far this year. He's walked four times. So I, I don't think it's possible to walk him, especially if you have late breaking stuff like Bumgarner. He will chase out of the strike zone. Out of play. And he gets in that batter's box and he is in the swing mode. But I mean, you think about it though, the eighth place hitter in the National League with the, with a pitcher behind you, you're not getting much protection. You want a guy who's going to go out of the zone. He might be the perfect style of hitter to hit in that eighth spot. Which it's ironic, but also is an excellent point. Ooh. I think he was thinking about swinging that one until he all of a sudden thought, that's going to break my leg. <laughs> if I hit that, I'm going to hit my right kneecap. <laughs> Big breaking ball, and it just bore right into the back leg. Strike three called. And he's not happy with the, that call. So see, there I took one and look what happened. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. Set up in the inside corner, and this is definitely a pitcher strike. See the way that Buster Posey sort of frames that. And I believe the way he received that is why Bumgarner got that strike. That's a generous strike. So, one away. Four strikeouts for Bumgarner. Posey keeps the web up and the thumb pointed towards first base. If he rolls that thumb over towards the third base side, he loses that strike. And that's just a nice job of framing. That would make Hobie Landreth happy. Hobie Landreth. Giants catcher back in the early days of the San Francisco Giants when they first moved out here from New York. And a, an instructor, a, a, a scout, he's... Been in the organization for a long, long time. Phelps over eight with the bat. All into the count. And he hit it foul. All right, Bert Strain, our ball dude tonight, the first base side, getting a little action, making some friends down there. It's going, Bert. And that's all for Phelps. The big curveball. Five strikeouts for Bumgarner. Tonight, right after the game, the premiere of an NBC Bay Area documentary, Rebels and Revolutions, featuring the stories you haven't heard about the social and political movements that started in the Bay Area and changed the world. Keep it here on NBC Bay Area for Rebels and Revolutions right after the game. So here is Yelich. They uh, sent us a little information about that show, Mike. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it sounds good. One ball and no strikes to Yelich. And it's 2-0. They do some amazing things over there in the NBC newsroom. Investigative reporters, I and mean, that's a great show. They go where a lot of other news teams do not go. I like that stuff. Well, they they do it right. They they're on the case. 
keeping an eye out for us. 3 and 0 the count. And 3 and 1 now. Yelich is a guy who will get a lot of walks. He's very particular at the plate. Although before he got hurt he was he was not yet hitting. In fact he has only 9 hits and 50 at bats hitting 180 for the year. Last year was his first full year in the big leagues and he had an excellent season. And he gets a walk. So Bumgarner had retired the last eight the last seven Marlins in succession. The only other Marlin who had reached was Prado with a single and here comes Prado now with two down. Yeah, the last seven in a row and he has struck out five of them. Yelich definitely a base dealing threat. He had 21 steals last year. Smart base runner. Called a strike to Prado. Yelich is still a real young guy. He is 23 years old. Runs well. He's a, he's a gold glove caliber left fielder. And as you say, he can steal a base. High on base percentage guy, too. Change up in the dirt. Blocked by Buster Posey. One ball, one strike. I think this is really the backbone of this team. The outfield that they have here in, in Miami with Yelich and Ozuna and Stanton. And you and I had a conversation. And many believe in this National League that the best outfield is in Pittsburgh. But I, I, I'll give you a pretty good argument with these three guys they have here with the Marlins. Very talented. Very young. That is a fair ball. And a fan interferes with it. Yelich keeps on going. But he is going to be sent back to third base. They're going to give it. A double on the fan interference to Prado. Well, I'm not sure who made contact with it, but you're going to lose your seat. You're going to be asked to leave. And uh, Dad touched it. Policy here, policy here is simple. You interfere, you're, you're moved out of those seats. Giancarlo Stanton with runners at second and third. Two down. Big moment now. And there's a called strike. Stanton struck out his first time. Well, this is sort of how we headlined the game. These two great all-stars. Giancarlo Stanton versus Madison Bumgarner. And now here they are in a big, big spot. Base hit, you mean a couple of runs. Stan has had a history of success against Bumgarner, that first inning strikeout notwithstanding. High in the air behind the plate. Buster, look out, the wind gets hold of it. Look out, and he can't handle it. Well, he can't believe it. I mean, I think he's as good as there is in this Giants team at pop ups. But a pop up that starts off at the first base line can move out. Towards third base, and I mean a lot. And there's a lot of wind up there. And this thing got moved out. I think when he saw this thing go up in the air, he thought he could catch it in the circle around home plate. He, he literally, and we just saw it. He turned around right toward the backstop, and then started moving up along the third base line. Wow. That was some mean stuff from Bumgarner, and he made Stanton look bad. Wow. The inning is over.
driving machine at Bay Area BMW.com. Last night, Casey McGee steps in, 3 1 count, bases loaded, and for the first time, as a giant, hits a home run here at ATT Park, and it was a grand slam. And that's our BMW drive. It's no cheap either. 424 feet was the official estimate. And a fastball right in there for a called strike from Phelps. That's at uh, hittracker.com. The most accurate ever. And it's cool to go, in, especially the day after when you've seen a home run. And on radio side, we have a sponsor for that, so we're supposed to estimate and all that kind of stuff. And they come up with what they call the true distance because they know the speed off the bat. They know the arc that it, it, it took on the way and uh, where it would have landed had it come back to level ground. 424, they said, for McGee. That's down and away, two and two. That's a big time sink. Trying to wrap that around the outside corner, backdoor style. That movement off the plate away, let the movement come back towards the strike zone. That's your Maria. And that's all for McGee. Let's take a look at that pop up and look at where McGee's playing at third base. I mean, he's way back in respect to the power from Stanton. You might wonder where's McGee on this play? Well, he can't get there. Posey's back, and all of a sudden, here comes the drift. Yeah, the benefit to being a big, strong uh, hitter like Stanton, you, left side of the infield is going to play almost to the grass. Big swing and a miss by Bumgarner. 0 and 1. He threw him a fastball, but he threw it right on the black to the outside. Bumgarner had four home runs last year, two of them grand slams. And that one had some cut to it, and now it's 0 and 2. That's a nice little slider that Phelps has got. Both the curveball and the slider are working for him tonight. I see to get him in the stretch because he's got a nice flow going out of the windup. Okay, the leadoff man is on deck. No score, last of the third. That uh, what do you call it, Mike? The marine layer. The marine layer. You can see evidence of it now heading in from the Pacific. O'Connor gets a piece of it. One and two. Well, it's our air conditioning system here in the Bay Area. We had some uh, humidity. You see the uh, Rincon uh, Towers over there on top of Rincon Hill. Not far from the ballpark. I wonder if up in those upper levels if you could actually see the game from up there. But you could see right field at least. Maybe we ought to go over there and check out some of those that might be available. <laughs> Not a bad idea. High pop up. Morris and Baker and Morris. As if to say, I've played here before, Jeff. I know what to do with those. I know what we're talking about. Let's take a look at the pitch sequence that Bumgarner threw Stanton. First pitch, a little cut fastball on the outside corner, strike one. Then he goes right. At the belt inside, he pops it up, and then on an 0-2 pitch, he breaks him down with a fastball right above the hands. And you won't see a worse swing from Mike Stanton, from John Carlos Stanton, I beg your pardon. He used to go with uh, Mike Stanton, but his given name was John Carlo, and he finally said, oh, the heck with it. I want to be called John Carlo. That's my name. I'll keep the hitter. And he fouls it back. I, I don't know why, but I was just kind of partial with to when he called himself Mike. I thought that was, you know, it was a good deal. Mike Stanton was the veteran relief pitcher the Giants had for a while. Also spent a lot of time with the Yankees. Pretty good reliever, too. Yeah, real good reliever. Had a long career, a lot of success, and he was an outstanding postseason performer. That Mike Stanton, not John Carlos Stanton. A little backdoor cutter, and it's one and two. Well, John Carlos Stanton, I think, when his career is all said and done. He's going to have a pretty good resume in the postseason. He's a very special player. 
A ball and two strikes. Now this could be interesting. Baker, bare hand, not even close. Well, once it got the high bounce, hit right off a of home plate. Jeff Baker is going to have to pull a miracle play with the speed of Gloria Aoki. No chance. And I hope you do it. He saw the height of that ball. He realized he had an opportunity for a base hit. You'll never see a better speed for a guy running down the baseline than when he's trying to leg out an infield single. So a little two out noise here. So here's Joe Panic, who lined out to left his first time. Hit the ball hard, but anyone out. And the Marlins are mindful of Aoki's speed. He has eight steals. And with two down, this is a, a, a spot where a steal could be a big play. Well, I think it should be automatic. Right to the second baseman, Baker. And the inning is over. We're headed to the fourth inning. Ozuna, the cleanup man, coming up against Bumgarner. No score. In his first rehab game with the Sacramento River Cats came out of it feeling very good. He went 0 for 2 with a sack fly. He's in the lineup again tonight. The plan for him is to get tomorrow off and play again on Monday. And quickly, Jake Peavy threw a bullpen yesterday, fellas. He came out of it feeling good, but not quite 100%. He's actually going to go to Arizona when the team goes on the road, continue his rehab, throw another bullpen, and may face hitters. John and Mike. All right. Thanks to, to Amy G for the update. Here is Ozuna, the cleanup man for the Marlins, and he takes a called strike from Madison Bumgarner. Ozuna hit a fly ball to shallow right that for a while looked like it might just fall in right along the foul line, but it was turned into a spectacular diving catch by Maxwell. So Ozuna is 0 for 1. Uh oh. Deep left center field, and forget about it. It is gone by plenty. One to nothing, Miami. He came to town with no homers, and he's got two in the first three games of this series. Now he was starting to grip a little bit too. He had 23 home runs last year. He goes a long time into the season before he starts hitting them. And you can see with that swing as to why he had 23 last year. They set up in the inside corner, and that thing is really to the glove. I mean, he kind of beats the scout report here. Not much of a stride at all, just a little movement from the back leg. And boy, does he get nice hip speed through that ball. Jumped out of here. Here is Real Muto, the catcher. Ball one. And if you're asking about that name, uh, that's the way he says they pronounce it in Oklahoma, where he's from. Real Muto. Well, there's the Muto, and then there's the real Muto, and he's the real Muto. <laughs> he 
As you look at it, you think if it's an Hispanic name, it would be Real Muto or something like that. But not where he's from. His family says it Real Muto. And I think Bumgarner would probably say it the same way. Two and one. Two and one the count to him. He struck out his first time. And back to the screen. Two and two. Giants who lost their first five home games this year. And they weren't for a while they weren't winning many games anywhere. They'd lost the last three games of a series in San Diego, then the first five here, and an eight game losing streak. Just got a piece of that one. And it's two and two. The Giants' uh, sins have gone ten and three at home, and they've turned a lot of things around since they were. At one point, they were four and ten, and they've gone eleven and five since then. And the Marlins have had a similar arc to their season. They started out very poorly. And he fights that one off. Two and two. The Marlins with three and eleven at the start of the season. After all the moves they made in the offseason. Wow. It's just getting a piece of everything here from Bumgarner. Two and two. The top of the baseball as it's coming in towards him. Ozuna with a home run to start the inning. And now Romuto is really making Bumgarner work. This will be Bumgarner's 65th pitch already in this game. Only in the fourth inning and with nobody out. Well, what you strive to be is 15 pitches or less per inning. And at the end of the fourth inning, you want to be at 60 pitches to give you an idea of where he's at with no outs here in the fourth at 65 pitches. But he's also a guy that you know he can have a seven or eight pitch inning too. Not unusual that you'll get one inning in, in a game where you go 25 pitches or sometimes even more. And that's a walk. Well, Giants baseball is brought to you in part by McDonald's. Get great deals at McDonald's with the McD app. Download the McD app on your smartphone and get great deals at participating Greater Bay Area McDonald's. Go to mcdapp.com. That hurts when you get a walk after a home run. Jeff Baker now. He grounded out to third his first time. Infield set for the double play here. Baker shows bunt, takes ball one. Bumgarner, start after start so far this year. And it's, the season's still very young, of course. He's been facing lineups, not just mostly of right handed hitters. He's faced several lineups with an entire groups of uh, right handed batters. He's only had, including tonight, Christian Yelich is 0 for 1 against him, a left handed hitter, the only lefty in the Marlins lineup. There have been only 10 at bats against Bumgarner by left handed hitters the whole season up till now. Bumgarner. He's pitched 41 and two thirds innings. Everybody throwing all their right headers against him. That's a foul ball off the foot. Well, I, I can't say that that's a great strategy simply because of how difficult it is to hit that that fastball that, that cuts into you. If you're hitting from the right side against Bumgarner, his fastball is going to get up off the fat part of the bat and it's going to jam you a lot. If you think about it, the movement, might favor a guy from the left side because it's not going to jam you. It's going to be out towards the end of the bat. But yet we still continue to see teams have that philosophy against Bumgarner. I know one thing: if he has all right-handed guys in the bat in, in the lineup, he doesn't care. 
his attitude is simply bring it. That is a base hit down the left field line. Extra bases. Real Muto, a catcher who runs well. He's being waved home by Brett Butler. And Crawford's throw is not in time. And it is 2 0 Miami. That walk has turned into a run. Baker with an RBI double. Take a look at the location from the pitch. Don't cut fastball. And Real Muto does a nice job of digging this one out. I mean, th this is not, or Jeff Baker rather, the second baseman, does a real nice job of digging this out. That was not a mistake. That's exactly where Bumgarner wanted to, to throw that pitch, right there at the belt with moving in. Baker hits a pitch like that. You can tell me right now, he's a good middle in hitter. And I believe you. Michael Morris struck out swinging his first time. Even though he had gotten ahead of the count three and one. Bumgarner was able to uh, blow two fastballs in a row right by him. One ball and no strikes. You know if I'm putting the lineup together against. Bumgarner I mean I, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for guys who are short armed from the right side. Quick middle end guys. Breaking for third is Baker. He'll make it there. Crawford. Throws out Michael Morris for the first out of the inning. Guys have to, some arm length, length to their swing, like Stanton, you would think would not have great numbers against Bumgarner, but yet coming into the nice ball game, Stanton was eight for 13, five doubles and a homer. It's baseball, go figure. And Bumgarner has contained. Stanton so far. Stanton struck out against him twice, including with two runners in scoring position in the third. But here in the fourth, Ozuna a double, Real Muto a walk, and Baker with an, uh, a double. The, the homer by Ozuna, the walk, and then the double. They've got two runs home, and they're threatening to get more. The Giants hoping to cut off this possible run as Echeverria is at the plate. The pitcher, Phelps, is behind him. Middle infielders for the Giants. One slot away from being all the way in. The corner infielders are pulled into the edge of the grass. Base hit to right field. He's going to test Maxwell. And he makes it in there easily. 3 0 Miami. You see, you see how they rule this play in right field. A little bit of a bobble by Maxwell as he got to the ball. If he comes up with that ball cleanly, I don't believe that Echeverria was going to test him. Nice opposite field approach. Here's the bobble. And right there is the go sign for Echeverria, and he makes it easily. I mean, he did everything right. Perhaps didn't have a lot of bend in his legs. But he watched it into his glove, still bobbled it. And they've ruled it ruled it a double, so it is not an error. So three runs are in for Miami, and the batter is Phelps, the pitcher. They've had a homer and two doubles in this inning. On one. I'm a little surprised by this call by Mike Redman, the skipper for the Marlins. Now, obviously, he knows a little bit more about his pitcher, Phelps, as to whether or not he's a good hitter or not. Phelps is 0 for 8 with six strikeouts, but still. That'll drop foul. We're at second base already. Let him have at it. You never know. He may run into one. Not like you have a, a runner at first base when you're trying to stay out of a double play. I mean, there are more ways a guy could score from third than from second, but they all have to do basically with a, a mistake being made by by the other team. 
and he might get a hold of one. And like you say, you got a, you got a shot here to actually have him knock him in. He's 0 for 9 with two sacrifice bunts. So so far, his bunting game has been better than his swinging game. Yeah, I didn't add that strikeout he had tonight. So seven strikeouts in that offense. But still, he could run into one. He's made contact twice. No swing, says Mike Winters, the crew chief, on the appeal. One and two. Three runs in. This place is so quiet. Well, they're not used to seeing the big fella get hit around. Home run, two doubles this inning, and a walk. And he strikes him out. Posey will make the throw over to first for the put out. Seven strikeouts for Bumgarner. Also, his pitch count is huge. He's thrown 23 pitches in this inning already and 78 for the game, and he's not through the fourth inning yet. A lot of work out of the stretch tonight for Bumgarner. He had the one two three inning in the second and that's been his best inning by far. Christian Yelich has grounded out to second and walked. Echeverria the runner at second. And a called strike. Well the Miami team they've been particularly tough on left handed pitching so far this year hitting. Before tonight, 289 against lefties. They've had five hits against Bumgarner. Looking at Chavaria back to second. Giants will have Pagan, Posey, and Belt as the three due ups in the last half of this inning. To the screen on that breaking ball, the count is 0 and 2. Got him 0-2. They set that target way off the plate away. They want that to cut across the plate and be outside, miss off the plate. As it was, that was right out over the belt. And you can see the reach back from Posey. I mean, that is right in the wheelhouse of Yelich. Ooh, and he fouled it straight back. A guy does that, he's on you. No balls, two strikes. Two down. That is back out of play. A very stressful inning for Madison Bumgarner as he rubs up the new ball. Yelich will see at least one more pitch here. This will be the 28th pitch in the inning. A ball and two strikes. Echevarria, the runner at second. Three runs are in here in the fourth. Bumgarner just not as fine with the control of his pitches as we saw in the first couple of innings. Two Prob two. Problem with the long inning is that the, the more pitches you throw in an inning, the, the pitches sort of have a tendency to dilute a little bit in their effectiveness. They're not as quick with the break of the fastball, not as hard with the velocity of the, of the fastball. Well, this is pitch number 30 in this one inning. Well, it had been 0 2, now it's 3 2.
Skipper's pacing in the dugout. That's not a good sign. And at long last, the inning is over. Eight strikeouts for Bumgarner. But three runs for Miami. And that fella is finally. For a friend or family member that is graduating, check out the Giants graduation pack. It includes tickets for two games, plus a commemorative Class of 2015 Giants cap and SF tassel. Pack start as low as $45. For more info on the graduation pack, visit sfgiants.com slash minipack. The Giants have some catching up to do as Pagan looks at a called strike from David Phelps. Pagan got an infield hit his first time. A new second baseman has come in for the Marlins. Donovan Solano replaces Jeff Baker. The Giants down by three as we start the last of the fourth. Strike two call. Giants have two hits. The Marlins have five. Both of the Giants hits have been infield hits. One by Pagan and one by Aoki. Phelps has really dazzled him so far. Oh, look at the movement coming back to the plate on that one. Yeah, that sinker is uh, really, he's got a nice feel for it. Tried to go front door there. But he's got the curveball, the slider, change it. They're all working. And he's put corner location on most of them. There's the change up. Giants need to get him in the stretch, and they need to do it early in an inning. Guy gets a good rhythm out of the windup like Phelps has right now, and you've got to change it up. Give him a different release point. Give him, get him in that stretch. Two and two. Phelps handles it, and one away. The Giants baseball is brought to you in part by PG&E, and on our birthday, PG&E wants to help you save energy, money, and the environment. Visit PG&E.com to take. The home energy checkup to see all the ways you can start saving today. PG&E together, building a better California. Buster Posey hit into a force play his first time. It's on one. Dodgers were. Scheduled in Colorado today, and that game got postponed. Not simply because there was rain. 
Strike two, the foul ball. Snow. It's snowing hard, and it's 65% chance it's going to snow tomorrow in Denver. So they had two games earlier this week with Arizona in town that got postponed because of rain. Last night, it was a rain shortened Dodger victory. They only played five innings in the sixth inning. The rains came, the game was stopped, the Dodgers were ahead two to one, and that was the final. And Buster Posey is going on strikes. All right, time now for our Ford Right Choice for high quality grade MPG. Ford is the right choice for California. Last night, Brandon Belt, four for five, a double, sixth straight game with a double. And the Giants' record is seven, set by Jeff Kent back in 1999. And his four hit night last night, his eighth in his career. That's our Ford Right Choice. The Belt is 0 for 1 in this game. Phelps is getting the Giants down, and for the most part, he's making it look easy. A ball and a strike. Belt hit one right back to Phelps his first time. There's a Brandon Bell fan. She loves the baby giraffe. He chased. Breaking ball down, and the count one ball, two strikes. Maxwell is on deck. Giants are down, but only by three. But they've not been able to get anything started against David Phelps at all. Two and two now. High and tight. Back him off the plate. Move his feet a bit. High and tight. Sets up. Soft stuff away. Donovan Solano just in the game. And the Giants go down one, two, three. And we head to the fifth inning. Prado, then Giancarlo Stanton coming up. Live sports. Left handed pitcher Ty Block. He's with Sacramento. Giants AAA affiliate. Six starts. He's 3 and 2 with a 3.22 ERA. And in 36 and a third innings, look at the walk total. Two walks, 22 strikeouts. And uh, his whip, 1.1. 24 years old. Remember that name, Ty Block. Giants uh, like him a lot. One ball, one strike to Martin Prado, who has a single and a double. And he comes up just in front of Giancarlo Stanton, the Mark the Marlins' great young slugger. And Bumgarner tried to get it back together here. He's just off the outside. 
Two and one. Well, this is a big hitter for him. A lot of pitches last inning, three runs on the board. He needs a clean inning, and he's in the heart of the lineup. So this is a big test. And getting that first out is critical. Plenty of room out there for Maxwell. One away. So the big out. That has been accomplished. Now Stanton. And so far, Bumgarner has been able to solve the puzzle that has been Giancarlo Stanton. And Stanton in the past has worn him out. Tonight, he's been at the plate twice, and Bumgarner struck him out both times. Giants put three infielders to the left of second. Oh, big rip. He didn't get it. Our friend uh, Marty Lurie had an interview with Giancarlo Stanton this weekend. And very interesting to uh, to hear him talk about himself. There's the ball too low. And he knows all about the history of the Giants, the history of Mays, the New York Giants moving to San Francisco, the Giants and the Dodgers. He knew all about the Giants and Dodgers because he grew up in the L.A. area. in there the breaking ball for a strike well I like the comments that he made after he signed his his contract of over 10 years over 300 million dollars he said this is not me hitting the lottery peace out he goes I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a good contract I've got work to do and, and, you know and, and, and you know, watch this guy go about his business you believe in him off his foot and he knows that he has been gifted with special talents and uh, he's a guy that He's working hard to enhance those abilities. I mean, he's the kind of guy that, that you want to be on the front page of your media guide if you're the Miami Marlins. And really, you can say that about all of baseball. That's that's how strong of an individual he is. One ball and two strikes. One out, nobody on. Struck him out again. And that's three times in a row that Bumgarner has struck him out. And he got him to go after another breaking ball down below the strikeout, which has been the weakness of Stanton. Not being able to identify pitches early and stay in the strike zone. And he gets after that thing, and by the time he commits to it, it's gone. Two down, Marcel Ozuna. Now, Ozuna has been the one who has given Bumgarner trouble tonight. Hit a home run for the first run of the game, leading off the fourth inning. Uh, one thing about Bumgarner, too, I mean, he's pretty basic in the way he feels about hitters. If a guy takes him deep, he wants to strike you out the next at bat, period. Well, he's got him in a quick 0 and 2 hole. Bumgarner has nine strikeouts already in this game. We're only in the fifth inning. One or two. Down the dirt. Fish hard bite. His nine strikeouts equals the most strikeouts he's had in a game this year. He had nine at Dodger Stadium 11 days ago, but that was in eight innings. There you see all of the strikeouts posted here at the ballpark tonight. And that is number 10. Mike, you said it. He wanted to do it, and he did it. He's macho.
last night when he received the 2014 National League Comeback Player of the Year award. It was presented to him by teammate Matt Kane, and then Matt Kane watched his teammate go on to hit a grand slam. I talked to Kane after the game. He said it was so cool to watch. It couldn't have happened at a better time. He went on to say, gentlemen, that as players, they put so much pressure on themselves. They make this a priority and forget it is a game that kids play. It's serious because it is their living, but you still have to enjoy it. And if you can't enjoy it, you can't perform. John? All right, Amy, that's that's a good point. Always important to remember. Here is Maxwell, and he takes a called strike from David Phelps. One thing we know for sure, David Phelps is in, enjoying himself immensely tonight. Well, you're right. He's having a lot of fun because everything's working. He's had a lot of weapons. And he has absolutely convinced Mike Malinsky, the plate umpire, that he's a strike throwing machine. The Giants bullpen, meanwhile, is working. That one is ripped down the left field line. He got the breaking ball and 0 and 2, and he hit it hard. Yelich cannot cut it off. Maxwell will stop at second, and he was turning it on. If there was any chance of a bobble or any way possible for him to go for three, he would have. He was prepared to do it. Well, he got a breaking ball, a little curveball that kind of lingers right out there above the knees, middle in. Good pitch to drive. Head stays nice and still through the swing. And this is what they needed to do. They needed to get a leadoff hitter on. They needed to get Phelps in the stretch. And this is the first time tonight that they've been able to do it. Nice at bat. Now Brandon Crawford. He drove one to the warning track in center his first time. At the knees for a strike. Madison Bumgarner with Crawford batting seventh. McGee out on deck, and then Bumgarner's spot would be due up. And the Giants, with Bumgarner having a very high pitch count, have George Contos warming up in their bullpen. Ball's, ballpark's playing different right now than it was at the start of this ballgame. We saw Crosswind going out to left field early in the game, and it is not doing that now. It's more towards center field, but right field's got a little more carry. Strike two to Crawford. One and two. Very generous strike. But, I mean, this is kind of how Malinsky goes. It's a start, tight strike zone early, and then he loosens up, and he's definitely loosened up to the corners. Crawford is the Giants' leading RBI producer so far. Trying to come inside with that front door sinker. Two and two the count. Bumgarner with Jake Peavy alongside. Bumgarner 99 pitches in five innings. Ten strikeouts in five innings, which is impressive, but that generally takes a lot of pitches. Well, that's the problem with strikeouts. 20th time he's done in his career. Now, finally, timeout taken. Real Muto, the catcher, out to speak directly to Phelps. So, what happens when the, 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 the pitcher's not seeing the signal for the pitch he wants to throw? The, the catcher just refuses to give that signal? Well, usually when you have a, a problem there, it's usually more with location than pitch called. So, you call timeout and find out what the guy wants to do. And a lot of times, a, a pitcher will, will be intent on throwing a particular pitch. And sometimes catchers, they realize, well, this is not the time to throw that pitch. I'm not going to let him throw it. So there'll be a little bit of an argument. He'll call a timeout and sort it out. Three and two now to Crawford. And that's a base hit. Stanton's got the strong arm. Here comes the throw. Not in time. He scores standing up. The Giants are on the board. Two strike at bat. They tried to back door a little cutter in the outside corner. He just sort of hooks it with a top hand. That's a strong handed swing right there. Finds a hole and 
Roberto Kelly is having a real nice series at third base coaching box. Aggressive taking on one of the better arms in the National League East. But he also knows that once Big Maxwell gets going, he's got good speed. And Justin Maxwell scores easy. Now McGee. Still nobody out. A run in. It's 3-1. to one. Miami. And Matt Duffy has come out on deck. Maxwell got it started with a double to left. And now he has scored the Giants' first run. McGee grounded a short his first time. 2-0. Just the beauty of getting a pitcher into the stretch early. It's, it's all the difference in the world when a guy's so comfortable out of the windup as Phelps has been the whole game. And he's starting to get a little lazy with a couple of types of, of, of pitch movement. Makes a mistake out over the plate. Crawford makes a pay. 3 0. McGee with a look at Roberto Kelly, the third base coach. Hit or take? Morris, the first baseman, on the bag with Crawford. Taking all the way. 3 and 1. Bumgarner's got the helmet on and the bat. Even though Matt Duffy is in the on deck circle. Hey, if Casey McGee hits one out of here, ties this ball game up, but Bumgarner's not going anywhere. He's going to pitch the sixth. And McGee hit one out of here last night. There goes Crawford. And uh, he never got the second. Now Bruce Bochy knows that Phelps is a pitcher that can get a ground ball. He does not want to see a double play from McGee, who's hit into a lot of them this year. So you're starting the runner 3 1. You're counting on contact, which McGee is very, very good at normally. This time he swings through it, and Crawford, a dead duck, trying to steal. Wow. McGee, very unhappy about that call. Now let's take a look at it. Talk about how the corners have grown. And that's just a pitcher strike. But Real Muto really doesn't move the glove a whole lot. And I think that may have been what Malutsky was reacting to. And that's a rough at bat. So, with things... Uh, Disintegrating in the inning here. Hector Sanchez. Instead of Duffy will come up as the pinch hitter for Bumgarner. Well, Bumgarner went five innings. Gave up three runs and five hits with ten strikeouts. Back to the screen. Hector Sanchez. He needs a hit. Hector has only five and 30 at bats for the year. He does have two pinch hits and eight at bats. And he's got a base hit here. That's got to feel good. He's going to go for it. It's a double. Sanchez has been grinding hard. Not getting a lot of playing time, so most of his at-bats have been coming in a pinch hit role. And it's, it's hard to get a swing and keep a swing in that role. So you go down in the cage and you get lost and you start working in here. That's a reward for hard work. Yeah, Bumgarner liking it. So an opportunity here for Nori Aoki. Second double of the inning for the Giants. Aoki. Has grounded out and had an infield single. Ball one.
Joe Panic out on deck. Oki tried to be the RBI man here. And that one cut back over the outside corner for a called strike. They said to the outfield may not be necessarily a run as he fouls that one. Well, you're right. You don't have much speed with Sanchez at second base. And even with two outs, I mean, he's going to get a good jump on contact. Now, if you have a preference to a field to throw to, to give him a chance to score, it would be to left field. Yelich has an average arm at best, but Ozuna and Stanton in center and right, I mean, they've got big arms. A ball and two strikes to Aoki. Chops it foul right past Roberto Kelly. And into the dugout area. There's the camera well. Just beyond the dugout. Fog really starting to uh, hover just above AT&T Park now. One and two to Aoki. Hanging tough here against Phelps. And he lays off. Phelps got a little extra on that one, 93 miles an hour. Yeah, that's, that's about all he's got. You're right, though. He tried to do a little two strike surprise with velocity above the letters. And that's not an easy pitch for Aoki to lay off of either. Mike Redmond, the Marlins manager. Two and two the count. Ooh. It, 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 it's, to me, it was a pretty obvious ball, but the way the strike zone has expanded, they really don't trust those corners right now. They've gotten big. They step in the outside corner, they try to cut this thing in, and that's probably not too wide for Belinsky, perhaps a bit too low, but I hope he lives to see another pitch. Full count. And he lays off and gets the walk. That's a great effect. The first walk allowed by Phelps. Two men on. The possible tying runs are on base. And Chuck Hernandez, the pitching coach, has been dispatched to the mound to go visit with Phelps. And Phelps is having a high stress inning. He's thrown 25 pitches in this inning now and is not out of it yet. Well, they're all out there talking about how the Dodgers are going to be coming to San Francisco here. Three game series. When the Giants come off the road, they go two to Houston. Four in Cincinnati. They come back and start up a short three-game homestand against Los Angeles. It'll be Tuesday, May 19th, Wednesday, tw the 20th. They're both 7:15 games, and then the final game of the series, Thursday, May 21st, is day baseball in the city at 12:45 start. So you need tickets? Go to sfgiants.com. Those three with the Dodgers will be the Giants' only home games in the next two and a half weeks after this homestand ends tomorrow. Giants will play 13 of their next 16 games on the road. So Phelps about to throw his 26th pitch of this long inning. The Giants have put four men on base in the inning. And that was not close to Joe Panic. Ball one. And this is where you, you love a hitter up there like Panic, who's not going to go out of the strike zone. Very disciplined to the zone. He doesn't chase very often. He will make a pitcher work. Sanchez at second, Aoki at first. In for a strike. Panic is lined out to the left fielder. He hit it hard, just right to the left fielder. And he is grounded out to second. Looking at the flags out in right center there, indicating wind blowing out toward McCovey Cove at the moment. Ball two. Pretty good changeup right there. Nice take. Base hit could mean a run here. The center fielder Ozuna is playing very deep for Joe Panic. In there at the knees, another changeup. Two and two. Yeah, backed it up, two changeups in a row. And that one throws Panic. But he's doing what he does. I mean, he gets pitches out of a pitcher, and he's not afraid to, to hit with two strikes. This is a big pitch in this ballgame. 
Both runners ready to take off at the crack of the bat with two down. Fights it off. Tell you one thing we see Phelps try to do is backdoor on both sides of the play. Left-handed hitters who try to wrap that little cut fastball that have has movement coming back into the lefty. He tries to snuggle that in on the outside corner. And he gets lefties on that inside corner. He'll throw that that two seam fastball that sort of comes into the inside part of the plate. Full count. Does have an open base, but you, you, know, you, you have to think that with Pagan on deck, I mean, this would probably be a pitch that gets in the strike zone. Can't believe that he'd want to use this base up here. Could be a nice advantage for Sanchez now that it's gone to three and two. Hector, not a fast runner, but he'll be running with this pitch. There they go. And foul. As you see, the Marlins are in the process of getting action going in their bullpen. Sam Dyson, a right hander, heading down. Thirty two pitches thrown in this inning by David Phelps. Bumgarner had a thirty one pitch fourth inning. Sanchez at second. Aoki, the possible tying run, and Aoki, a fast runner. At first, they'll both be off and running with the pitch. There they go. Along the left field line, slicing into the corner, foul into the crowd. So, we'll do it again. And the, uh, uh, that gentleman gave that baseball to a young fan. Well, a as you're supposed to. Because you ask yourself, quite simply, who's going to take that baseball to bed with him? The gentleman or the kid? And the rest of my case. Good fan. He's my hero. I love that guy. We'll try it again. Runners go. Right to Morris. And Phelps gets through it. A 34 pitch marathon inning, and the Giants get only the one run. Brandon Crawford with the RBI single to get Maxwell home. On to the sixth, the Giants go to their bullpen, trailing 3 to 1. Toyota Time sales event is going on now. Save big on every Toyota. Check out all the deals at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
Well, for comprehensive coverage of everything orange and black, check out pregame live and postgame live before and after every Giants telecast on Comcast Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. Three to one the score. The Giants. The uh, and hit and run play. Well, I guess better said the run and hit play that fell apart ends up being a huge play in the fifth inning where they hit two doubles and a single and had a walk but only got one run out of it. George Cactos on a relief of Bumgarner now facing Real Muto who has struck out and walked and scored a run. Ball and a strike. Hard slider. Rare that you see Cactos throw a scud. You saw his numbers. He was really out to a nice start. Completely different pitcher than what we saw when the Giants originally got Cactos from the Yankees. Back then he was a two-pitch guy, and more often not than not, he was going to throw a hard slider a lot of the time. Didn't have a lot of confidence in the fastball. Well, now he's got two types of fastball, a four-seam, a two-seamer. He's throwing a cutter, a slider, which has always been his bread and butter. He's throwing a changeup, and now, two days ago, he threw his first curveball that he's ever thrown in the big leagues. And uh, he was quite proud of it. He said, well, I used to be a starter. I mean, I, I've got all those pitches. Well, Mark Gardner, Dave Rigetti encouraged him to bring them back. And they're now part of his repertoire. Check swing. Two and two. An appeal. No, says Mike Witters. That was not a swing. Contos has been a busy man this year. This is his 15th appearance. The Giants have played 31 games. This is number 31. He's been in nearly half of them. And he has pitched more innings than any other reliever in the league. He's right now, if he pitched at this pace the whole inning, uh, the whole season, he'd be right around 100 innings for the season. One thing about Bruce Bochy, I mean, he's never had a relief pitcher finish in the top 10 of appearances since he's been a manager. Strike three called. Got the high strike. Neil Muto thought he had a walk. Thanks for stopping by. Just a 3 2 cutter, staying away from a predictable fastball right at the belt. The 11th Marlin to go down by way of the strikeout tonight. Here is Donovan Solano. Up in the spot where Jeff Baker had been. Baker had an RBI double in the fourth inning. Off Contos to McGee to belt for the out. Let's see if Contos is okay. He waves off the dugout. Hey, he's fine. He got an out. May have caught the side of the foot. No, I think it got him in the left wrist right there above the glove and caromed over to Mick Casey McGee. It didn't hit a foot. If you're going to get hit someplace, get hit on the glove hand. That's how fast he got on him. Oh, that's a base hit right there. Denied. Nice play. McGee in the proper place. Now Michael Morris facing Contos. Too low. Ball one. You talk about the workload that Contos absorbs on. He, he is incredibly fit. One of the harder workers on this Giants team. I mean, he's built for for innings for work. Base hit. I remember when Contos after his rookie season came back the next year uh, during spring training he, he told a story to a, a group of Giants fans that had come down for the, the spring training vacations or whatever. As uh, Dave Rigetti is going to go out now to talk to Contos with Echeverria coming up. The Giants are going to get some action going in their bullpen, meanwhile. And uh, it is Javier Lopez, the left-hander, heading down. And he said that uh, he one day pitched through 50 pitches in a game in Houston. And uh, then the next day, uh, the word came down that they were hoping that he might be available. And so he said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be ready. And uh, and Bochy said... Uh, I, I told Bochy the story. He said, I, I, I believe the way I put it to him was, you're available, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I am. 
But I would be shocked if George Contos said I can't take the ball. I mean, he's just not that way. In fact, I asked both you today: Is there anybody you wouldn't use in the in the uh, bullpen out of the bullpen tonight? Thinking that he would say Petit, who threw three innings last night. He said, "Well, I'm not going to use Petit, but he's going to tell me he can throw." That's just the way they are down there. I want to be a big league relief pitcher. You take the ball. They pride themselves on that. Echevarria and the slider in there for a strike. Now, right now, Phelps is in the on deck circle, but the Marlins have three left handed hitters they could go to if they want to pinch hit for him if the inning keeps going. And Posey didn't know where it was, and over to second base goes Morris. Well, George is throwing a couple of those in the dirt now. One ball, one strike. Let's see how far out in front of home plate this thing bounces. Well, it's just to the right. It just really handcuffs Posey. I think that, that bounce surprised him. And once he could not locate it, a good read from Michael Morris at first base, who does not have great speed. And still, he made it to second base easily. Now first base is open with the pitcher's spot view up next, but not necessarily the pitcher who will be coming up. And the count goes to one ball and two strikes to Echevarria. You watch Posey, but he sets his target. It's going to be very late. He's not going to let Morse at second base know his intent to set a target inside or outside. You know, I find that interesting because you know, they played with this guy last year, so they know everything about him. They know that he's probably a guy that will give location if he's a runner. So Posey's going to try and prevent that by showing his target very late. Two two. The games you have to play as a, as a catcher, and, and you can tip a pitch by where you set up. You can tip a location, obviously, but you have to be careful, especially when you have a, a veteran on the base pass. That is going to go foul down the right field line. Two and two, the count remains. And Chivaria drove in the third Miami run in that three run fourth inning with a double. See, Chivaria was smelling his bat head. He was smelling for hits, see if there's any in there. I mean, I've never smelled a bat head that had hits in it, but some guys say different. Well, you weren't a hitter. <laughs> Hitters can't trust them. Two and two. Right to panic. Plenty of time, and Contos gets through. It'll be Pagan, Posey, and then Brandon Belt coming up. Three to one, Miami.
Barracuda Networks, cloud-connected security and storage solutions designed to simplify IT. Reclaim your network with Barracuda. Well, Comcast Sportsnet has complete Giants coverage on Sportsnet Central. Every night at 10.30 p.m., Comcast Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. 3-1 to one, Miami leading the Giants. Last of the sixth inning. David Phelps still in there. And he just had a an epic 34 pitch fifth inning. But only 83 total for the game. And the curveball is low for ball one to Pagan who has had an infield single and hit one back to the pitcher. Pagan said that middle finger gives him a little less trouble batting left handed than right. And that curve is low for a ball. 2 0. Pagan yeah. hitting 325 for the year. The bottom hand is your power hand, your top hand is your guide hand. So you can see why the left hand would give him more trouble hitting from the right side, the power side. And the foul out of play off the third base side. Yeah, they got lit him up. He said that he could take his forefinger and his ring finger and kind of pinch them together and sort of lay his middle finger, the one that was had the nail split on it, right on the top of the other two fingers. And he says it kind of keeps my my top hand loose. And he goes, "It's not a bad way to hit." And I think he fell on that last swing. That is a base hit, left center field. Just like that, a nice two strike at bat for Pagana gets Phelps right back in the stretch. Well, I'll tell you, you, know, you want an illustration of what big league hitting is all about. Take swing off, go with the movement, and just throw it right back up the middle. I mean, there's not a lot of lower body here, there's not a lot of swing. He hardly has a back swing at all. Just protecting the strike zone and using the middle of the field, that's, that's a beautiful swing right there. And that's not a hanger either from Phelps. That's pretty good location pitch he beat. The Marlins are going to get the bullpen going again. Buster Posey is grounded into a force play and struck out. Skies one into right center. Stanton. And Buster is 0 for 3. Easy play for Stanton. Now Brandon Belt. Belt, as hot as he's been, he's had at least a double in six straight games and 12 hits in those games. But no home runs, not in that stretch, not for the season. Belt is 0 for 2 in this one. And ball one with a changeup. You see that pitch called a strike. You know, when you're hot, pitches like that that are borderline 50 50, could go either way, get called a ball. When you're not, that's a strike. 2 and 0. Belt looking over at Roberto Kelly with Pagan at first and Michael Morse on the bag with him. Two and one. Good change up. I think of all his pitches, I mean, you really would be hard pressed to try and describe which one has been the best one. And talking about the specialty pitches, the curveball, the slider, and the change up. They've all been good. Pagan dives safely back. The Marlins are playing Bell to pull on the infield. But not in the big overshift. There you see the shortstop, Echeverria, over toward the middle. Solano, the second baseman, toward first base. Two and two. That was back to the screen. Maxwell, who has been swinging the bat real well the last couple of days, has knocked in the Giants' only run, so, or has scored the only run that they have put up so far tonight, is on deck. It was Crawford who actually drove him in. 
Three to one. The Giants are trailing. And Pagan steps back to the bag, standing up. Well, the Marlins are very concerned with Pagan, apparently, but he did not have much of a lead on that one. Now the count is full. So Pagan may well take off on this pitch. We'll see. Pagan has three steals and four tries for the Giants so far this year. Now I gotta believe if Belt gets on here, it's good night to Phelps. The right-hander Dyson ready in the bullpen. And Pagan scurries back to the bag. Right handed hitting Maxwell on deck. Pagan not running. And a high, lazy fly toward left center. So Pagan will have to turn around and go back to first. Doubt is 0 for 3 in this one. Now Maxwell. Maxwell ripped a double back in the fifth inning as Javier Lopez runs down to the bullpen. Mark Gardner, the bullpen coach, down there with him. So here's Maxwell. He had two RBI singles last night, hitting 260. Maxwell has 14 RBIs as he takes a strike. Only. Brandon Crawford has more RBIs for the Giants than does Maxwell. Crawford on deck. Working that outside corner. Strike two. I mean, those last two pitches from Phelps were absolutely perfect location. I mean, little two seam fastballs, low 90s velocity, knee high on the corner. I mean, Maxwell's up there looking for something he can leave the ballpark with. And Phelps puts him away. Six strong innings for David Phelps. On to the seventh. Phelps due to lead it off. We'll see what happens. Game of the series. We'll be back with you on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network Wednesday, May 20th at 7, where the Giants will take on the Dodgers from AT&T Park. Tomorrow will be Ryan Vogelsong on the hill taking on right-hander Matt Latos. And we have a pitching change.
Ichiro announced as the pinch hitter for Phelps. And when that happened, Bruce Bochy out to remove Contos and Lopez coming in. We'll be back. Phelps, the Miami starting pitcher. And there's Javier Lopez in for the Giants bullpen to face him. 14th time that he's been in. Six and two thirds innings amassed in those 13 previous games. No record yet with a 2.70 ERA. He's going to face two hitters that are both left handed Ishiro and Yelich. Ball one to Ichiro, who is closing in on 3,000 hits. Ichiro's about, I think, 133 hits away from 3,000 in the major leagues. And the count one ball and one strike. Ichiro, who is an historic figure coming from Japan as a hitter, there had been pitchers who'd come over here, but from Japan and and succeeded, but but no hitter had done it. Ichiro, who had been a, a big star in Japan. McGee was playing him shallow, and Ichiro is gone. Ichiro has hit 317 in Major League Baseball. And he's had 2,868 hits. So what's that? Uh, 132 hits away from 3,000. On top of which, he had nearly 1,300 hits in the Japanese leagues for the uh, the Blue Wave, the Oryx Blue Wave. His first year in Major League Baseball, when people were wondering, there was a big, all this debating going on, watching him in spring training, whether he'd be any good or not. And even Lou Pinella, his manager in Seattle, wondered if Ichiro was going to have what it, it took because he oftentimes did not look that good in spring training. Ichiro hit 350 as a rookie. Banged out 242 hits. Played gold glove outfield. Stole 56 bases for the Mariners. And he'll forever be a part of the history of this ballpark. Well, I, you, you just kind of feel cheated that, you know, he spent nine years in the Japanese leagues. I mean, obviously, he's a Hall of Fame over, over there. Or was going to be, but... I always wonder. I mean, he'd have been a guy that had over 4,000 hits. Now, Pete Rose has the record of 4,256 hits. I mean, he could have been a guy that, that gave that a run. Yeah, between the two leagues combined, Ichiro's over 4,100 hits right now. Christian Yelich has grounded out, walked, and struck out. One out, nobody on. Two and two the count. That is three and two. Ichiro, of course... The only time he had played in this ballpark until this weekend series was in the All-Star game in 2007, and he hit it inside the park home run. 
And Lopez puts Yelich away. Two down. Let's go back to that All Star game, Mike. Now watch the ball come off the wall. And with Ichiro's swing, I mean, this is probably the least exciting inside the park home run I ever saw. I mean, it, it, not even a close to a play at home play. Yeah, he's quite special. I mean, you know, you look at what what Pete Rose hit average wise in the 24 years that he played 303. And Ichiro, during his span of his career, he's hit higher, average-wise than Rose. Ichiro coming into this year a 317 batting average in Major League Baseball. Ichiro in Japan hit 353 in his days with the uh, the Oryx team. 317 batting average in Major League Baseball for Ichiro. And he has kept himself in fabulous shape. He still runs well. He's still an excellent outfielder. Still has a strong arm. As Prado Lopez left in there to face the right-handed hitter, and he's jumped ahead of him. One ball and two strikes. Ichiro is 41 years old now, and when you see him, doesn't look 41. That's he for sure. He does not. Right to Brandon Crawford. And that's a strong inning for Javier Lopez. Retired the side in order. Crawford, McGee, and then the pitcher spot coming up for the Giants. The dealer last night, Yusmiro Petit, three strong innings, no hits, one walk, couple strikeouts, 45 pitches in those three innings. So what was so significant about that? It was his first big league save, and that was our Honda save. Three to one, Miami leading, and A.J. Ramos comes in for the Marlins in relief of David Phelps. And look at those numbers. He is. He's been a nightmare for hitters so far. Well, 20 strikeouts in 16 innings against five walks. He's only allowed 12 base runners. He has been on fire. And he's a guy, I mean, he doesn't blow you away with big high velocity. He's got a good fastball. It's low 90s. Um, but he's a four pitch guy. Curveball, slider, changeup. And really, I think the changeup is what has been so hot for him since the start of the season. 1.13 ERA. And nobody's hitting him well. Opponents hitting 132 against Ramos. That's dealing. So Brandon Crawford leads off. And ball one at 91 miles an hour off the inside. Crawford has knocked in the only Giants run of the game. But he singled home Justin Maxwell back in the fifth inning. Over the outside corner. Called a strike. One and one the count. Cool night here at the ballpark with fog overhead. 
Baseball in the sunshine here tomorrow, the final home game of the home stand. Ooh, changed up. Yeah, that is that change up, and it is a swing and miss change up for both righties and lefties. Up the middle, base hit, and that looked like another changeup. 85 miles an hour, and Crawford got the hit. Indeed, it was. Crawford get a little short with the swing. Stick it back up the middle. Circle change. You can see the rotation of it, but he has a little elevation to it. He can get this one down. That's up there around the belt. Easy area to defend. And for the third inning in a row, the Giants get a leadoff hitter on. Giants have been behind since the fourth inning, but never very far behind. Still right in the game, down by two runs. Three to one the score. Maxwell, uh, McGee, the hitter. Maxwell has scored the only run. It was knocked in by Crawford back in the fifth inning for the Giants. Giants are going to get their bullpen going again, and so too will the Marlins. McGee has grounded a short and been called out on strikes. A ball and a strike. He had a pretty good rip at that one. Casey McGee facing his old team. Like done, the hard throw lefty get greased. Breaking ball and that fooled him one and two. Well, he's got count leverage sitting in a one oh count. I mean, he's thinking fastball. And it tells you how hard that break was on that slider. Good pitch. And a fastball got him looking. And McGee knew it. Second time tonight that McGee got called out of strikes, and I believe the one before this was a ball. He kind of got the bat taken out of his hands here. That's perfection, folks. Now you have to believe that he thinks strikeout, having 20 strikeouts prior to that one in 16 innings this, this year. But he threw that thing right through the glove. Now, Gregor Blanco, the pinch hitter for Javier Lopez. One out, Crawford at first. Ooh, called a ball. Hector Sanchez was a pinch hitter for Bumgarner in the fifth inning and hit a double. Blanco, the second pinch hitter of the game used by the Giants. That foul ball hit the very top of the backstop and ricocheted high in the air and into the lower deck. Gregor hitting only 193. He's had one pinch hit in six tries. Aoki on deck. Big hole open up on the right side of the infield with Morse on the bag holding against Crawford. Two and one. Now Sergio Romo, Giants right-hander, there he is, has joined Mach Machi in the Giants bullpen. That is right through to the backstop. And Crawford now into scoring position on the wild pitch. Now that takes away the, the double play. Possibility when he lost the force, so that's a big 90 feet. And to set the outfield now, you've got Yelich in left field, is an average arm at best, but good arms with Ozuna in center and Stanton in right, an outstanding arm. Although he takes a, a little while to get rid of it. Pretty good speed with Crawford at second.
Three and one. Back out of play. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes with one out, runner at second. And he walked him. You can see Ramos was shouting at himself as he missed with that one. Well, a 3 2 changeup. And that's not a pitch that you have to think find location with. If you're going to go away from the fastball on a 3 2 count, and that would have been the first changeup that Blanco had seen in the at bat. You don't have to, to locate it in a, in a real nasty location area. That's one you could throw right over the middle of the plate. And that's probably why he was upset at himself. Well, now the Giants have a couple of lefties coming up. Aoki and then Panic. And the Marlins have a left hander ready in their bullpen, Mike Dunn. But Redmond, Mike Redmond, the manager, is sticking with Ramos, at least for now. Aoki has grounded out, singled, and walked. Two men on. And it's ball one. And Redmond makes this decision based on one thing. Ramos has been nasty. And he's been striking everybody out. We talked about the league hitting a buck 32 against him. That's right, he's left his both. Left center field at the edge of the track. Caught by Ozuna. Crawford went back to tag up and started toward third and Prompted that throw and a very strong throw by Ozuna. Crawford saw the throw and then he went back to second. Well, down two runs. You can't take a chance if you're Crawford. You cannot make that third out of third base. Take a look at our splash cam at the arc of this high fly ball and watch the throw from Ozuna. I mean, he's got a rifle. And guys with great arms, they love to show them off. And he wasn't thinking about any cutoff man there. Didn't have to. Two down, Joe Panic. Two men on. And the changeup misses, ball one. Panic is lined out to left and twice grounded out. 0 for 3 in the game. Giants looking for that clutch hit now. Called a strike with a fastball. Giants trail three to one here in the seventh. Crawford at second, Blanco at first. That one ricocheted off the catcher to the backstop. One and two. Panic, very compact swing. Pagan on deck. Crawford led off the inning with a single. But the one out, Blanco walk. Blanco at first is the possible tying run. The outfield pushed toward left field against Panic. Change up, and he took it. That's not that easy pitch to take. Yeah. The change up is so deceptive because. Ramos comes at you with the exact same arm action that he has on the fastball, and that's what sets up a good change. There's Pagan on deck. Now Ramos signaled to Real Muto, the catcher, that he wanted to speak with him. Two men on the possible tying runs are on base. Two down, two balls, two strikes. And a high pop fly. They've got this one surrounded, and it is Ozuna. Two men left for the Giants. They've left seven men on to the eighth inning, and Giancarlo Stanton coming up.
Talking about Nori Aoki being the leadoff man for the Giants and being a catalyst in that spot. But his defense so far this season, not too shabby. I spoke to him about how he approaches his defensive game. He said he takes a lot of pride in how he plays the outfield. He said he uses several factors trying to manage the wind as he navigates the outfield here at AT&T Park. He said he uses the flags up at the view reserve level. He also throws pieces of grass up in the air to see which way the wind is blowing, and he spends a lot of time chatting with Roberto Kelly, guys. That's right, Amy, and that's an interesting aspect of Aoki coming to the Giants, a new ballpark, and uh, a ballpark that has a lot of little quirks to it. A lot of them have to do with the wind when you're playing the outfield. As Gene Machi in for the bullpen to face Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton has seen Machi a couple of times. He's had a single in two previous plate appearances. Did he swing on that splitter? Apparently not. I thought that was the, at least a look down of the first base umpire. Come on. So when it's a right hand to throw in, then he does wear that face guard. When it's a lefty, apparently he doesn't. He was not wearing it when Bumgarner was on the mound. The Giants started tonight. Two and one. Well, I, I think at some point in his career, you know, he, he won't wear it. But right now, I mean, you take the the injury that he had last year. I mean, he just you can't take another one that quick after taking it initially. The, the and, and he took you know, a high velocity fastball right in, the, in his below the eye. And when he came out of it, I mean, he said, "You know, it could have been worse. I could have been hit in the eye." I mean, this guy is, refuses to give in to a negative situation, but he was lucky. And he gets a walk. September the 11th of last year, Mike Fires of Milwaukee. And that ended his season. When you see a ball come back to a pitcher that hits a guy in the face, and you know how direct that was. Horrifying moment, to say the least, and you saw the poignant shots of his teammates and even the the opponent the Brewers and I guess to uh, to make it just a little bit worse that was a strike they called him for swinging <laughs> well the umpire was probably right but given that situation come on don't add insult to injury Ozuna and there's a called strike so Machi who walked Stanton and then fell behind Ozuna. Ozuna, who has hit a home run again. He's hit two in this series in the first three games. He homered for the first run of the game. That was back in the fourth inning. And it was a long one out to left center, deep left center. Off the glove of Machi. Recovers. And there's nobody at second. Unbelievable. The middle infielders were stunned. Ball hits off of Machi, and you're always taught as a pitcher, if there is a runner first base, if you bobble the ball, forget the lead runner and go to first. But Machi was probably the best fielding pitcher that the Giants have. Comes out, and he's thinking second base. And there's not going to be any call here. I mean, Bruce Bochy is, I I'm sure that he saw a panic from behind the bag. He had no idea how far away he was from the bag, but this is this is not going to be reversed. And just a remarkable play of athleticism from Machi, but nobody was on the base. The throw would have been in time to get him. Yeah, it was right over the bag. So it is an infield. Is that an infield hit or is it a fielder's choice? Well, they've ruled it a hit. Showing bunt now, Real Muto, the catcher. And it's ball one. Well, they got to get somebody out, but that's what you're saying. A pitcher is, is taught that kind of a play. Just go ahead, if you can recover the ball in time, get the guy at first. And I think that both Crawford and Panic assumed that that was what was going to happen.
But now they've taken the hit away from Ozuna and we'll call it a fielder's choice. There's the bunt. Brandon Belt looks at third, decides to get the out at first with panic covering. Kamala's trying to extend their lead here. It's right now three to one. Now they have two runners in scoring position with only one man out. Sergio Romo starting to get heated up. Giants bullpen. Pure strikeout situation here for Machi. Donovan Solano. Who did not start the game. Baker started. We never got word about why Baker was taken out. What? But it was just a defensive move or. He wanted to watch the Warriors. <laughs> So that do we, do we can we rely on that uh, information? And there's on one. Why should he be any different than anybody else here in the Bay Area? <laughs> well, a good first pitch fork ball from Machi, and that is his best strikeout pitch. He's going to give you a, a low to mid 90s fastball, a little nickel slider, and that fork ball you just saw. And he is pitching for a strikeout, plain and simple. Infield is in, and that was. Pulled foul, very much foul. The runner at third, Stanton hit the deck. Yeah, he's already taken one to the face. He's not taking any chances. Remember, he's 6'6", 240 pounds. It's not that easy to move that body out of the way of something coming at you, especially when you're not expecting it to come at you. Right past the first base bag, and that'll be two runs. Stanton has scored. Ozuna crosses, and it is five to one Miami. And I think Solano hit that the only place he could hit it. That was a fastball, and that was off the plate away. And he just extended, and that thing was fair by about a foot. Way outside target. And just shoots it right past Belt. You can see the first baseman pulled off the line. None chance of getting that thing. And as you pointed out, John, an easy score, two runs. That one hurts. Well, it happens. You you give away an out, and somehow, and it may not be in reality that it, it's worse than if. So he hit the ball off the pitcher just got a hit on it, but when there was an out to be had you didn't get it. And the Jets have paid for that. A ball and a strike now to Michael Morris who has struck out grounded out and singled. And now Posey's going to go out and talk to Machi. Well, I think he sensed a bit of an overthrow a little frustration understandably. From Machi. So you got there and calm the waters if you're Buster Posey. Out into the big part of the yard, deep right center. Plenty of room there for Maxwell. Solano tags up and he'll go to third. Well, Morris, even in Miami, he might have had a, a ball off the wall or, or over the wall with that one. Well, it felt good. Let's put it this way I mean, just too much height, but. That bad boy was up there. He hit it above the lights. At least it seemed that way. Now Echevarria and Bohr, big left handed hitting rookie, is on deck in the pitcher spot as a possible pinch hitter. And there's a called strike to Echevarria. Two big runs in here for the Marlins, and they have extended their lead to five to one.
Joe Panic. This is going to be a long throw, and he got him. And the Marlins are going to say, hey, wait a minute, we're going to, we may appeal this one. And that's a big call because if he's safe, that's a run. If this if this play stands, this is just a remarkable play. Wow, I think he beat it. Looks like he was safe. That was just entering the glove. Uh, but I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it. Another look here. Looks to me like they're going to overturn it. But we'll see. They are putting the headphones on in contact with the command center in Manhattan. Rob Leary, the bench coach, giving the sign. Lift up that head. These don't work. Let me try yours. <laughs> These earphones are for a much smaller guy. Come on. The call was made by Mike Winters, the crew chief and the first base umpire. Now, now look here and look at the point where the foot, the foot now. Now the ball's got to be in Belt's glove before that foot hits. If they arrive simultaneously, that, that's a hit. I mean, it, this is really close. I think he beat it. So there was a runner at third, Solano, with two down. So that's a run, and the inning is still going on if the call is reversed to safe. So the umpires are studying from all the different angles and trying to put it all together. Remember that because the call was out, there has to be conclusive, absolute. Conclusive evidence that the call was wrong before they will be empowered to uh, overturn that call. And this is uh, well, we saw how close it was, so they're they're taking their time. There's likely several umpires because there are eight umpires there at all times. Well, let's find out. Looks like we're going to get the verdict. What say you, the jury? And that means a run and an RBI for Echeverria, his second RBI of the game. And the inning goes on. Three runs have scored in the inning. Well, Joe Panic, it wasn't for a, a lack of a great effort by him. The fact that he even made it close is remarkable. I mean, that was a tremendous play. But I do believe they got the play right. And that, after all, is the whole point of the, the replay system. So here's Justin Bohr pinch hitting for A.J. Ramos. We're in the eighth inning. The Marlins have started to break it open here. Three runs in. Take a look at the effort from Joe Panic and just how special this was. I mean, he had to go a long way, and his momentum was really going hard towards left field. But still put enough on it to make it close. Brandon Belt also. I mean, he's a big guy, six feet five, and he really stretched out to try and bring that one in. Justin Moore, since being brought up, has had a lot of success in limited at bats. One more look, cross step, throw off the right foot, just sling it across body. There's that stretch you're talking about. That's a lot of stretching just to keep your foot on the bag. Yeah, he barely did keep his foot on in contact with the bag.
see him do that kind of reminds you of Willie McCovey, who's, whose nickname was Stretch, or, and still is, for those who've known him for a long time. Well, Board draws a walk, and that's going to do it for Machin. Not a uh, strong inning for Machin. And Sergio Romo will be brought in here in the eighth inning. Six to one, the Marlins lead three runs in the inning. And with the leadoff, Ben Yelich coming up. We'll be right back. Oh, tonight is, by the way, Superheroes and Comics Night at AT&T Park. Sergio Romo, 13th time that he has come into a ball game. 0-1 with a 3-0 ERA, 15 strikeouts in nine innings. Two men on, two men out, three runs in. And the changeup is low for ball one to Christian Yelich. Stan Lee was uh, our host tonight, as he said, play ball. Got a nice hug from Sergio Romo. Stanley, a big baseball fan, loves it. From uh, Marvel Comics, is that it? Yes. Creator of Captain America and Spider Man and Iron Man. He created Sp Spider Man. Yeah, he's the oh, guy. Oh. A, a clever creation, I thought. One ball, one strike, and the changeup, he swung. And it's one and two. Yelich is the eighth batter to come up in this inning. The Marlins with three runs in and a six to one lead. And the slider is low and in. Two and two. Miami, meanwhile, they've had. Done the left hander up in their bullpen. They've run through some uh, different thoughts now. I think Brian Morris, a right hander, has also gotten up out there. Echeverria at second, Boer at first. Just got a piece of it. The foul it. Still two and two. Yelich is another one of those guys you really can't overload one side of the field. He hits the ball all around. Tough to defend. And that was shot right over toward Ron Wotus in the Giants dugout. Hit the screen right in front of him.
six to one. The Marlins putting it to the Giants in the eighth. Two on, two out. Well, they had that one over the corner, but it was too low. And it's a full count now. So Echevarria from second and Bohr from first will be off and running. To go back. Still three and two. Three two money pitch comes at him with a slider. Almost got four different types of movement that he'll give you. He'll cut the fastball, he'll sink the fastball, the slider you just saw, and the changeup. And running that thing out of his hands right there on that inside corner may set up that changeup to the outside part of the plate. Echevarria and Bohr. Go. And another foul. And that was with the fastball. Two seam fastball. Perfect location. And a nice job of Yelich fighting off a good location pitch. Well, this will be the tenth pitch from Romo to Yelich. Martin Prado, a right handed hitter, is on deck. There go the runners. And that's in there. Strike three call. Pagan, Posey, and Belt coming up, but now the Giants are down by five. and revolutions hear the untold stories about civil rights protests universal health care marriage equality political and social movements that started right here in the Bay Area and changed the world stay right here after the final out for NBC Bay Area's rebels and revolutions one of the uh, segments concerns the the idea of athlete as activist conceived on a park bench in San Jose State and then we saw evidence of its impact during the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City. So uh, that and much more. I think you'll find it a, uh, a fascinating story. Of it. And it's history from right here in the Bay Area. Extremely well done. And that is uh, coming up right after the game. Brian Morris, the new pitcher now for the Marlins. 15th time that he's come in. Hard throw. 11 strikeouts against eight walks. As you see a mid to high 90s fastball and two types of breaking ball, curve ball and slider. Pagan is two for three in the game. And Morris throws him a called strike. Pagan hitting 331 for the season. That is a high three-quarter release. 
See a guy with a high release like that, you're going to get some tilt on this curveball. And it is a good strikeout pitch for him. He's admit you two breaking balls, the slider to go with that curve, but it's a 12 6 break on the curve. A roller, Solano, one away. And there was that curveball. Morris has not done that well. 13 and two thirds innings, 18 hits allowed, plus eight walks. That's 26 base runners in 13 and two thirds innings before well, tonight. That's bad whip. Walks and hits combines per inning pitch. You're averaging two base runners an inning. You're not having a good season. You, your ERA, ERA is not going to be good. Buster Posey hitless so far tonight. Grounded out, struck out looking, and flyed out. Ball one. So he comes right at him with his strikeout pitch. First pitch. Did Posey a favor, show him that pitch early in the count. Two and zero. Oh. Ninety-six miles per hour. Giants have their closer, Santiago Casilla, warming up in the bullpen. Two and one. 95 with a little cut to it. That's a healthy fastball. Santiago Casilla, heating up. He needs some work. Two balls and a strike. Base hit. Giants have eight hits. They have a, as many hits as do the Marlins, but not nearly as many in runs. Well, it's a start. A two one count. He tries to cut another fastball on the outside part of the plate. Posey take a little swing out, go back up the middle. I see base runners, and that's what that swing says right there. Down five. I mean, everybody wants to hit a home run, but right now they need to set the table. Ball got loose. There it is, rolling back by the backstop from the Giants' bullpen. One got away, apparently, from Santiago Casilla. Something you don't see very often. An umpire leaving his position to go out and field a ground ball. I could make Mike Malinsky the plate umpire. My guy at the post game wrap tonight. <laughs> Good hustle. There's ball one to uh, Brandon Bell. Bell, who had had 12 hits in the last six games and at least one double in all six of them, hitless so far tonight. Did he swing? Yeah. Third base umpire, Marty Foster. Said absolutely. One ball, one strike. Belt is hit back to the pitcher, grounded out to second, and flight out to left center. One out, runner at first. Morris plays behind Buster Posey. And another appeal. No, this time. No swing. Two and one. Justin Maxwell on deck. Giants are behind six to one. They need base runners. They need big hits. A couple of big flies wouldn't help. Oh, uh, it wouldn't hurt. They're looking for help. There's a the ball in the dirt. Three and one. You're right. Walks and knocks. That's what. That's what they need. Maxwell on deck. The outfield bunched up towards center. Three and one the count. And he fouled that one right off the mask of the catcher. Real Muto. Bill Morris just going right at it with a fastball and three one can. He's got a five run lead. He can't. He knows he can't walk him. Right smack in the middle of the mask. A real muto. 
Three and two. And that's ball four for Belt. How about that? A three two slider with a five run lead. Morris quietly starting to dig himself a hole. He's about a 2 and 0 count away from getting more activity in that Marlins bullpen. Justin Maxwell has flied out, doubled, and struck out. He scored a run. On one. It's a 95 mile an hour two seam fastball. That's, that's a good sinker. Which is what he should be pitching for the ground ball. Buster Posey at second, Brandon Belt at first. One out. A ball and a strike. Dodgers got postponed due to uh, rain and snow in Colorado. San Diego and Arizona, four to four, last of the 11th inning in the desert. Oakland trailing up in Seattle, six to two, top of the eighth. At Safeco Field. Called a strike. So now Maxwell behind to the count, one and two. It is rally cap time. And that is a rally cap. <laughs> is that the latest in rally cap style? He spent some time on that thing. Two and two. He walked out of his house tonight going, yep. Got it just right. I'm going to break it out when they need to score. Where does he keep it until then? That's a great question. <laughs> Maybe it folds up real neatly, just sticks it in his pocket. <laughs> I don't know. Bullhorns, man, they're tough to fold. <laughs> I want to party with that guy. Well, let's find out if it works here. We'll we'll know soon enough. Two and two, the count to Maxwell, and he fights that one off. Stays alive. Two and two. Crawford is on deck. Get a hit right here, and you can absolutely set off an alarm clock in the Giants' dugout. Maxwell has thrown the bat well in this series so far, especially the last two nights. And he had him out of the front foot on that high breaking ball, but the ball goes safely back into the crowd. Off to the right, still two and two. Bumgarner started this game for the Giants, and the Marlins got to him for three runs in the fourth inning. And the then the high pitch count got to him ultimately. He went five innings, having thrown 99 pitches. He struck out 10. And he struck him out. Another 95 mile an hour sinker. And he swings right over the top of it. Yeah, it'll make a grimace. So two down, Brandon Crawford. He has knocked in the Giants' only run of the game. That was in the fifth inning when Maxwell doubled and Crawford singled him home. He also singled his last time. He's had two hits. Posey at second, Belt at first. And it's on one.
Brian Morris on the mound. And it's 0-2. Well, that's what he he wants to be ahead of you so he can drop that 12-6 breaking ball on top of home plate. I mean, that's that's the goal. Sitting in an 0-1 count and watch the spin of the curve, but just a straight downer. And Crawford cannot hold up. And he could do it again. No balls, two strikes, two on, two out in the eighth. Six to one, Miami leading. And he comes right back after him with a fastball on the hands at 95. Good pitch. I mean, 0-2, you plant a fastball, a little cut on the hands of a lefty at the belt, and that, that's right where you want it. From Crawford's perspective, you, you should feel lucky he didn't break his bat. Because that's what that pitch in that location would do if you hit it solidly. It's going to blow you up. This will be the 23rd pitch in the inning thrown by Morris. Just missing. That was a close one. Oh, Morris is walking back to the dugout. He thought this <laughs> inning was over. Watch Morris get a little leaky towards the top step of that dugout. Yeah, okay, we did good there. Not so fast, my friend. One and two. And that straight downer again for the strikeout to end the inning. Chance have left nine men on base, seven of them in the last four innings. Six to one onto the ninth. Come at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. So go to MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. Romo out and Casilla in for the Giants. Casilla is the Giants' closer, but in this scenario, he's not closing. He had kind of a maintenance inning, and he needs some work. Martin Prado leads off, then Giancarlo Stanton and Marcel Ozuna. So, three of their top hitters coming up in a row here. Marlins six, Giants one. Maxwell drifting back and out to his left. One away. 42,285, the official paid crowd tonight at AT&T Park. Earlier this morning, I went down to uh, Atherton. Willie Mays, uh, for many years, was trying to uh, help 
with uh, several members of the community get a a ballpark built for the the kids down there to play ball and they finally were able to do it it was dedicated this morning Willie himself is there as part of the, the ceremonies along with Larry Bear the Giants president and CEO Giancarlo Stanton takes a called strike and uh, the weather was beautiful it's a beautiful ballpark they uh, use the same grass that is used here at AT&T Park and the same dirt that is on the infield here is on the infield there well how cool would that be if you're a young kid and you know that the grass and the dirt you're playing on is the same that Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford and Brandon Belt and Madison Bumgarner are playing on if I'm a kid that catches my imagination Mike Homer Field at Willie Mays Ballpark, I think is the official name of it. And it's one of two. Velcro glove. <laughs> That's a good hinge right there in your glove. <laughs> hey, come on. One and two to Giancarlo Stanton, who has struck out three times. He struck out every time he batted against Bumgarner. He walked in the eighth inning. That's a foul ball. One and two. Giancarlo, I met Giancarlo last year during the World Series. It was either the World Series or maybe the uh, League Championship Series. They had the presentation of the Henry Aaron Awards for the, the best hitters. And Giancarlo Stanton from the National League and Mike Trout from the American League were the, the winners. The award presented by the man himself, Henry Aaron. And Giancarlo, who he's, it's all he's accomplished already. It's kind of hard to remember how young he is. Was he's 25 years old? 25. No, he is definitely going to make a run at the home run record in his career uh, if he has good health. I mean, always a huge big if, but as strong as he is, and he's not hitting in it. In a home run ballpark, either the field in Miami is really a pitcher's ballpark. He's going to lose a lot of home runs there. He is. It's kind of like, you know, what happened to Willie Mays losing a lot of home runs at Candlestick. Knocked down by the wind out there at Candlestick Point. Have you driven by Candlestick lately? I was looking for it. I, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's dwindling down. And that's the strikeout, the cutter on the outside to get Giancarlo Stanton, who strikes out for the fourth time in the game. And all four strikeouts have been swinging this strike threes. Well, you can't throw a better cutter. I mean, it, it's such a subtle break. It's flat, but the slide on it's about a three to four inch break. But you get after it as a hitter, and it's just not there. And that's perfect location with that movement. So two down, and here is Marcel Ozuna. Who has one hit? It was a home run that knocked in the first run of the game back in the fourth inning against Bumgarner. And it's ball one. Ozuna hit 23 homers last year with 85 runs batted. And I remember the Giants first saw him a couple of years ago right here at ATT Park. And he just tormented them in, the, in a series here. They could not get him out. And it's a ball and a strike now. The Marlins have a lot of guys who've done that. The Giants are 6-16 six and 16 the last 22 games they've played in this park against this team. And it's not just this team. It's the Marlins, but I mean, they've had different guys over the years. And not always a, a contending team, but they have... Been able to shut the Giants down again and again and again in the Giants' own ballpark. Two down, nobody on here in the ninth. The Marlins lead six to one. And that with a lot of sink to it, too low. Three and one now. You see it not happy with that last pitch. You see San Diego on the out of town scoreboard out there has gone ahead of Arizona six to four at the top of the twelfth inning. In Phoenix.
Look out. And that's ball four for Ozuna. Yeah, Justin Upton has hit a home run in the 12th inning for the Padres. Upton coming back to Arizona where it all started for him. Eighth home run of the year for Upton. So here is Real Muto. Now, the problem here is Bruce Bochy may want to use Casilla tomorrow with the game on the line in the ninth inning with a one run lead or some such thing. He does not want him to overstretch himself tonight while he's just getting some work in. And now Affelt runs down to the bullpen to start getting ready just in case. Giants bullpen has been worked heavily. Three of the last four games, including tonight, the uh, Giants uh, starters gave up a lot of offense. Heston went five innings Wednesday. Tim Hudson did take them into the seventh inning on Thursday. Linscombe gave him six last night, and Bumgarner five today. Now, one good thing about the Giants' schedule is they have an off day. On Monday, it's a travel day when they head out to Houston. So when you get an opt like that, I mean, as a as a manager, you, you can extend your guys a little bit because you know they're all collectively going to get rest on Monday. Unlikely we're going to be playing catch on the plane. I hear it's a big plane, though. Well, it's not that you can't. That's the first that'll be the first flight, right, for, for the new the new uh, Giants plane. But you won't be on it. I will not I'll be here Monday night at uh, Bash Off, the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame. As Dwayne Kuyper and I will induct or introduce Barry Bonds, who's going into the Sports Hall of Fame. Two and two still to Real Muto. I'm looking forward to that night. Barry Bonds going to go into the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame along with Dusty Baker. Dusty, who used to be Barry's manager, and also he knew Barry from really almost the time that he was born. Now it's a full count. And the pitch count is mounting here for Casilla. He's thrown 20 pitches in the inning. Barry Bonds and Dusty Baker came to the Giants. Dusty is manager. Bonds is all-star left fielder. The same year, 1993. First year under the new ownership. The runner goes, and that ends the inning. A couple of strikeouts for to see it. The Giants will need five runs to stay alive. Casey McGee scheduled to lead off. Six to one, Miami.
documentary Rebels and Revolutions. Here are the untold stories about civil rights protests, universal health care, marriage equality, political and social movements that started right here in the Bay Area and changed the world. Right after the final out, NBC Bay Area's Rebels and Revolutions. Casey McGee leads off against Morris, and it's 0-1. Matt Duffy out on deck for the Giants to back for the pitcher. Morris back for his second inning of work. And now it's 0 2 to McGee. The Marlins with three runs in the fourth. That's when they took a lead against Bub Garner. The Giants got one run in the fifth inning. And then the Marlins got three more in the eighth to open it up. 0-2 to McGee. And that too low. He was able to check his swing. One ball, two strikes. Pretty good strikeout pitch. You can see why that pitch works against righties as well as lefties. Straight downer. Two and two. McGee has grounded out to short and twice been called out on strikes. 105 game time here tomorrow. In the sunshine, the final game of the homestand. Ryan Vogelsong for the Giants up against Matt Latos. Back out of play. You know, one thing I want to do, John, I, I do want to mention the other Hall of Famers who are going in for the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame, along with Dusty Baker and Barry Bonds, Roger Maltby, the, the golfer and, and uh, golf commentator. He's going in. Franklin Muley going in, owner of the Golden State Warriors. And Johnny Mosley, Olympic gold medalist. Franklin, so, Franklin Muley also... Uh, Guy very much involved in broadcasting. He put together a group for the 1960 Winter Olympics up in Squaw Valley. Took Lon Simmons and Russ Hodges, among others, up there to broadcast him on the radio. And he struck it out. 0 for 4 for Casey McGee with three strikeouts. That's three strikeouts in a row here now for Morris, who suddenly held. That is release point, and everything got quick. Pitched out of a jam last inning, and here, boom, he's just mowing guys down. Franklin Muley, the guy who hired Bill King to become That's the voice of the Warriors. It's a good hire right there. They were the, uh, the San Francisco Warriors in those days. And Bill King, the... The greatest basketball play-by-play -play man I've ever heard. And on radio, Bill King was great at whatever sport he was broadcasting. One of the great, all-time great radio play-by-play -play broadcasters. And Frank Muley, who himself was, he's a, he was a little bit unusual. And he wore that uh, Sherlock Holmes kind of, uh, what do they call it, seersucker cap with a beard. Oftentimes, he would be refused entrance into an NBA arena because they'd say, who are you? Where's your pass? I'm the owner of the Warriors. They all right. Well, the Giants finally got one past Echevarria. That ball was just hammered by Matt Duffy, and they'll score that a hit, I'm sure. Well, you're right. I figured if Echevarria can't catch it, it can't be caught. And you're not far off. Is that an assumption? This is a top spin, one hop seed. It's a right on the thumb of the glove. You see his whole body going backward, trying to get as good a hop as he could. That was nasty. Good at bat. Aoki. He's one for three, plus a walk. He's been on base twice. Check swing foul. Joe Panic on deck. Jets have nine hits. They've out hit the Marlins. Nine to eight, but they trail six to one.
A ball and a strike now. Oh, he got an infield hit back in the third, a walk in the fifth. Most of the big crowd that was here, 42,285, they've gone somewhere else. Well, they're still here at the ballpark, but let's just say that the lines of the bathrooms are really long right now. Yeah, so well, wherever they are, they're somewhere where we can't see them. Two and one the count to Aoki. Morris holding on the back at first with Duffy. Ozuna almost back to the same spot where he caught the fly ball hit by Aoki back in the seventh inning. So two down and that leaves it to Joe Panic. Tomorrow's game on television with Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Vogelsong and Latos. And the Giants hit the road Monday to Houston where the series will start Tuesday. They have a day off on Monday which on which they'll travel. Ball one to panic. Heston and Hudson will go into two games in Houston. Same ballpark that the Giants have been in many times when the Astros were a National League team but a much different Astros team than they've had for several years there. A lot of that young talent has really started to blossom. Duffy runs with Morris playing off the bag and he takes second. The count goes to 2 and 0 to panic. Hey, right about Houston, they have definitely turned the corner. They had a long, hard, dry spell. Base hit can be in a run here. Duffy, who runs well at second. 2 0 the count to panic. That's down the left field line. That's fair. So Duffy in to score, and it is six to two, Miami. Panic's first hit of the game. He had been 0 for 4 up until then. Well, Gamer Babes are still believing. And here's why. The fastball bell high out over the plate, and Panic doing a good job of going with the location. Just sort of slices one down the line. Amazes me that people are still trying to catch the ball when it goes into foul territory. Seriously. Don't touch the ball. Pagan. And that should do it. Donovan Solano. And the ball game is over just like that. So the Marlins have won two of the first three. A 6-2 to two win for the Marlins here tonight. They beat Madison Bumgarner to get it. Bumgarner shut down John Carlos Stanton, but lost the game anyway. Well, it's not often you see a guy who strikes out 10 walk away with a loss, but uh, the Mar or Marlins in the fourth inning, they had opportunity, and they really had uh, some great events to get the job done. For more on tonight's game, tune in to Sportsnet Central on Comcast right after we sign off. Tune in to Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 for Giants pregame live before the final game of this series. We'll be back with you on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network on Wednesday, May 20th for the Giants and the Dodgers at 7 p.m. For Mike Kruko, I'm John Miller. The Marlins beat the Giants, and now we say from San Francisco, good night.